Welcome back to part three, where we will learn mixing and EQing. So, what is mixing and what is EQing? Well, basically, we're going to make sure that the volume levels are uh, correct so that nothing's overpowering one another. Uh, the melodies stand out. And EQing is probably the most technical, technical thing that we will talk about today. Now, as I said in the previous tutorial, mixing, EQing is just as much of an art as actually writing music. It takes a very trained ear and it takes years and years to get very good at it. Uh, but you will make a lot of progress very quickly and it'll actually make other songs more enjoyable for you because you will notice a lot more different sounds. So let's get started. So I actually already t <laughs> I actually recorded one video, but uh, one of <laughs> my sound from my DAW wasn't coming through. So here we are again. So it's already pre-mixed. So here we are now. This is just a very rough idea, very base level tutorial. So what is an EQ? Well, all we hear are different frequencies. So EQ is when you equalize and you take away some or you might boost some you might just minimize them a little bit so we have all the way on the left is that's low and going to the right that is the higher sounds the higher frequencies so uh, depending on what it is for example we got here we have a bass right now this this particular instrument is emulating a real bass. Real bass have, you know, when you slide on a string, you might hear it or string fret buzz. Uh, the strings are touching the fret in a place where it's really not meant to, but it's really almost impossible to avoid, particularly with a bass. So that adds to that bass sound, but that's not really what we're going for. Um, so we're gonna take those out. So I put a high shelf, this is without it. Yeah, a little high kind of pop sound. You hear it particularly on this note. So let's just cut those. We just want a nice, smooth, warm sound. I get, uh, for this, what I'm using here is Rhea EQ. It comes with Reaper. But uh, I'll have to check, but I do believe that Reaper actually gives you this VST to use for free in any DAW. Uh, but most DAWs also come with an EQ. So what I'm using here is called a high shelf. So that just eliminates everything. These are band EQs, so just kind of like an area. If you right click on those, there's all different types. A notch, which just cuts everything in that particular area. But for now, we just, we'll just keep with bands and high passes. Or high shelves, excuse me. Again, we cut that out. So when we do that, we cut all those those high frequencies out. That's going to make it so that when there's something, perhaps a, a melody that's using a lot of high sounds, they're not clashing together. Uh, because you can only hear so much of one frequency. A speaker can only produce so much of that. One is going to override the other. They're going to clash and it's going to sound muddy. It's not going to sound good, period. So we have that for this. Now this was uh, keyboard is very difficult to mix because you have stuff down here that is lower sounding. But then uh, here I'll take this lower sounding. But up here you end up with this and over that melody. Now when you do stuff like this. When you cut out that low, because we don't need that, we need to make room for the bass. You'll be like, oh, that sounds so flat. That's true, but we also have this one, keep in mind, with it. So let's get kind of fill those out. And I, I, this one I have mainly some bass. We can actually, let's just actually up this low mid range here. So a good hot, um, hobby. <laughs> A good habit to get into is called subtractive EQ. In other words, you only boost something 
if you've taken something away somewhere else. Uh, so you don't just want to be like, hey, uh, let's keep this all flat. And I haven't taken away anything else from any of these, but it sounds good if I go like this. Yeah, that sounds better to the ear, but overall, it's not making room for anything. It's going to clash. Uh, you don't want to get too much in these a lot of times, as it can start to sound muddy if you start boosting this on everything. So just make sure, try and keep a mental note of what you've boosted and what you haven't. So again, here we have more of the, we kind of boosted the high, we took away that low, we boosted the mids a little bit. Uh, you might notice on here, I'm, I'm boosting highs, but why am I cutting this? Most things above 20K have a kind of an annoying sound to them, kind of fuzzy. Uh, now, if you're making something like a chiptune song, you might leave that because a lot of those had that and it might give it that nostalgia kind of thing. We're not going for that here. The other thing I did is you might notice we only had one cassette 808 last time. Why are they separated? Well, what I did was I separated the uh, snares, or in this case, claps, and the kicks. Now this one actually has a little more going on. So this one I'm using what's called a, it's a type of transient shaper. Now this is the most basic transient shaper you will ever see. This one is really just for drums and it's not as customizable. You can't do exactly what you want with it like you would with an actual transient shaper. But if you're at very basic level, this is uh, makes it sound more snappy. It's going to make it sound seem louder, but it's really not. So it's handy for drums. For example, so I got my... Let's hear it without it. Now let's hear it with it. It's the same volume level. Now for EQ, snare is a little interesting. Um, I like to cut a little bit here because a lot of the instruments are coming in here. We don't want them clashing with the snare. And I boosted a little bit around 4 to 5K and a little bit in these lower mids. Now without EQ, it sounds like this. With EQ, it sounds like this. So it's a little less like hit you, <laughs> stabbed in the eardrums, a little more chill sounding, uh, but it's still got that good punch. So I go down to kicks. Again, I got this on here. I changed the clipping to soft. Clipping is a term uh, you will hear a lot of if you are mixing anything. You might notice that mine, my project is a lot quieter than yours. Reason being is when we move on to mixing, you want to have headroom to where you can push the audio levels to seem louder, uh, to sound bigger, and to hit that appropriate volume level. Because if you're too high, if you're too loud, streaming services like YouTube, Spotify, whatever, will compress your sound and make it sound not near as good. But clipping, what clipping is, is when something is too loud, uh, there's too much volume being pushed through your DAW, your interface, your amplifier, whatever. It creates a very distorted sound. Uh, so that's, you, you don't want that generally. There's some very rare cases where you might want that. But for a song like this, you most certainly do not. So you gotta make sure your volume levels aren't too loud. For example, if I just did this, to these drums. Now it's this red is signifying it's clipping. We don't want that. So we can clear it. And there we are. We're not clipping anymore. For the bass, I change this to a soft clip. Again, this is a case where clipping is actually good. It's basically making it clip in certain frequencies to, uh, to make it stand out more. This, 
why would I boost something in the higher range for a base? Now this is like an electronic drum kit. It's an 808. But on a real drum kit, an acoustic drum kit, when you hit a bass drum with the pedal, it's making a fairly loud snapping noise. And that's where you get a lot of that distinctness. Uh, if you, that's why drums now, if you listen to modern drums like in a rock or metal soundtrack they sound huge but if you listen to like something from like say the 60s a 60s pop song it's almost hard to distinct that bass they didn't really up those particular frequencies they didn't have those stand out and that's fine uh, for certain things but it this kind of thing we want to stand out so we want that like kind of click sound so I'm cutting a decent amount because without it up here. Let's uh It's got a click, that's good, but it's got like a really annoying sound to it. So now we get this click from this boost. But we're cutting those annoying sounds. And then we can just cut a little bit here and make there's a lot of instruments in there. We don't want those interfering. And then we can kind of probably give it a little boost here. And the 150 range. Well, let's probably 100 range. So there we are at that. This is the tape orchestra. These you can cut a lot out of because they're supposed to fade into the background. They're not supposed to be prominent. And for example, this one's a lot deeper. And I basically just i cut anything that wasn't low out of it now another thing you want to note is you might notice these knobs why are they going different ways where are they? these are panning knobs in other words whether it's left or right speaker combination of both now the great thing about the invention of stereo phonics is the fact that you have two speakers playing so therefore you can pan something to the right, something to the left, and you don't have to worry about it mixing and EQing it as much because you have two speakers producing those sounds. So, uh, a lot of times I will pan deeper sounding things to the right, higher sounding things to the left, and it doesn't matter how you pan as far as that goes. I just do it that way because I mix a lot of orchestral stuff uh, symphonic stuff and the way an orchestra is laid out is not by chance uh, people long ago figured out that it sounded better this way uh, they had things that are high like the violin on the left things that are deeper like cellos on the right and drums in the back centered uh, because they were louder <laughs> you don't want them up front you wouldn't have been able to hear anything so basically that was the ye olde way of mixing uh, and it still is a successful way of doing it today. So we can take advantage of that kind of thing because now uh, ever since probably I don't know when exactly it became popular and invented the early 70s I would assume stereo has become a thing so we can take advantage of that. You can actually go down here and listen to it in mono which is a good practice to get into because if it sounds good in mono it is going to sound good in stereo. Mono is basically putting the same thing through both speakers. For example, here we are in uh, stereo. Now let's hear it in mono. I'm mean, notice if you hear this, it some of these notes are fading into back. We don't want that. So in this case, we might actually cut even less there. Give a little more of a boost there. And you notice a lot of what we're hearing now is drums. We don't, we can turn these down. I love in your face drums, particularly the snare. 
but we want it to be balanced. And we're also hearing a lot of bass. You want to adjust those volume levels to go, and then. see we're, we're quite low on the volume so we can take everything and we can just give it a little boost we should shoot for negative six down here uh, so it's easier when we end going to our mastering phase and this is for the loudest part of the song we want to be around there whoa there we go. <laughs> All right, so that is that step. So we want to make sure it's panned accordingly, right, left. I normally keep drums in the center. If you're recording an acoustic drum kit, you would normally um, put, you know, where it is in the drum kit, mix it so it feels like you're sitting behind it. Your snare is a little bit to the left. You know, you got your crashes uh, maybe on the left. You have your lowest tom on the right, things like that. It adds a cool effect. So again, nothing I did here. This is not even close to uh, a very super well mixed song. Uh, it's just showing you the principles, so you can start training your ear, and you can start. You can get an idea for it. Keep in mind, you don't want to mix things for too long. You want to take a break, especially if you don't have good stereo monitors. Like I'm using, I'm using nice headphones, but after a while you will suffer ear fatigue and you'll mix something like, yeah, I finally got it. And you will listen to it the next day and it sounds so hideously bad. So we don't want that. So there's a lot of things in here. If I was going to put this out and I was going to, make it professionally for someone I would spend four times the amount of time I've spent on this to make sure that everything is perfect EQing is kind of a satisfying fun thing but it is also quite time consuming to get that perfect sound so I will put a description to the this uh, Cymix Diablo Lite uh, it's a pretty new free plugin and it works good and again I believe I mentioned it but re-EQ comes with Reaper and they give it out for free I do believe you can download the pack of VST, uh, Reaper VST suite I think it's called uh, Kakos is a amazing company so I think that will conclude it for this time. So just make sure you got your volume levels that are on negative six. Uh, mess around with the volume levels a little more. That's another thing I would mess around with more in this, making sure that everything is the appropriate volume level. And then next time we will add some effects on here and make it sound bigger. We will master it to make it sound to the appropriate volume levels and to make it sound louder uh, than it really is in a way. Make it so everything just sounds nice uh, so that's some people say mixing's harder than mastering other people say mastering's harder than mixing so it just depends on how your ears work so uh, that will conclude this tutorial and I will put also put a link to some amazing uh, youtubers that do mixing uh, that I have personally learned a lot from uh, for the metal world Ola England uh, is insane at mixing metal is by far the hardest genre of music to mix other than perhaps orchestral because uh, you have to make a huge wall of sound uh, also there is a few others I'll put in there uh, and you can learn tons from them uh, they will go into much more detail than I have here this is just again a very basic tutorial so if you appreciate this and it's helped you out, please uh, subscribe to me. I appreciate it a lot. Give me a like. Yeah. If it's something you didn't understand, let me know in the comments, and I'll make sure to address it or help you out. All right, guys. Have a good one.